Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and today I'm going to cover a bunch of book stuff. So um, if you caught one of my last videos or my Instagram, I mentioned that I got a NetGalley account and I really thought I was going to get a bunch of rejections for the books I was asking for, but I ended up getting quite a few, um, too many at one time probably, and then I like sillily, I don't know if that's a word, got some e-loans from my library. So I just have like a ton 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 on my plate but um I want to go through a few of them I don't think I have updated this since I started reading so um the first book I did was Stalking Shadows um I'm gonna try to do my ARC reviews first um this one is by Kyla Pannon I think I'm saying her name right <laughs> um and it's like a Beauty and the Beast retelling but like with sisters and so I think that's a re really unique spin on that. It was very historical and French and like the share warmth, be naked and share warmth. <laughs> um, lots of tropes in it. I did wish, and this is coming out September 14th, there is a character that I wish we found out more about and if y'all saw my um, writing recap video. I talked about thin threads <laughs> and um, this book had one of those and it was just like, okay, so the only reason that someone didn't find out something is because someone was afraid to go do this one thing. And you're like, okay. Um, and that's where like reader believability comes in and just rolling with it. And um, I kind of thought that thread was a little too thin. I wish, you know, something else had happened. but. Whatever, it was still a really good book. Um, so check it out if you like uh, Beauty and the Beast retellings with sisters. I absolutely adored the last scene where the sisters are together and they're fighting and it's like perfect. Um, after that, I finally got around to uh, King of Scars just in time for Shadow and Bone. Um, so I got to finish this and I forgot that Nikolai wasn't even in like the first book and I was just like, God, I can't wait to get to him. He's one of my favorite characters. Um, so Lee Bardugo. Let me know if y'all watched the show and what you thought. I thought it was really good. Um, I think it's so funny um, that Mal in the books, like I could have cared less about him. And in the show, he's like shown us so much more like loving and devoted and all the things that I wanted in the books and in the books. I think that's why so many people went for the Darkling is because he like twisted our feelings too and we felt like Alina did. And in the show you see more of Mal like actually caring and trying. <laughs> so yeah, I think, oh gosh, it's interesting. And with that, I'm on, and yeah, sorry, I deviated from already from my art readings. Um, I'm currently in The Rule of Wolves and uh, I'm trying to get this through this one by, you know, the end of May. And the holy smokes, these long books are going to kill me. Um, so another arc I got was Going Greek. And I think they just changed that one. What's getting me about these arcs that I request is that their blurbs aren't what the book is about. <laughs> so I hope my reviews, I hope they read them and they're like, oh, we should take out this part because it's talking about like a steamy romance. Like I was expecting this great Greek romance, like, um, but it's this really sweet, really sweet um, dude and he's very respectful and like kind and but it's not like a sizzling romance like it was saying um, and there was like again a character doing things that like no one in the reviews was okay with they were like why is this character doing this they know that person sucks like it's one of those things and like you as the reader already know that like this character should be living here and doing life here but somehow they're torn and they're just like why um, but it was a very easy, like I would say a beach read, um, learning all the Greek stuff. That was all fun. Um, it just didn't live up to what the blurb was and what I was expecting. Um, after that I read To Love and To Loathe, which is, um, oh sorry, that other one, Going Greek, was by Sue Roberts. And then To Love and To Loathe I read as an arc, and I think it's actually out now, um, it's by Martha Waters. And I was expecting like a Bridgerton. I had read that it was like a modern historical novel. And I'm really glad I didn't read the first book because reviews on that were just, and that couple is in this book. And even just that, they kept, they referred back to what happened in the first book a lot. Um, so I was like, yeah, I guess I don't need to read the first one. Um, I liked, I thought it was gonna go a different route. Uh, the guy asked the girl, um, to rate him in the bedroom basically and uh, or like teach him things like teach him what he's doing wrong 
and I total I thought it was like a total play and I was like okay like yes like pretend you think you suck in the bedroom um, but then it turned out like someone had given him a bad review and no one's told him that he sucked his whole life or whatever but um, the whole time she also has a bet going that he'll be married by the end of the year or season or whatever and she really tries to go on that subplot that I did not care for and I wish they had done more with the subplot of bedroom teachings. And so that was kind of disappointing. Like I'd picked up all these books for like the romance and was just like left without the romance, but it's fine. <laughs> they also a bit outed a character in that book and everyone is very upset about that as well. So, ah. Oh my gosh though, Sophie Gonzalez is one of my new favorites and uh, she has If This Gets Out, it comes out in December. I cannot wait to buy it even though I've already read it because oh the boys, they are one of my favorite new couples. I absolutely adored them. It's about a boy band and um, having to pretend a certain way so they've like all pocketed all the boys to be a certain type and it's not even like their personality at all, they just like picked random stuff. And so they have to conform to what their brand is and their image and the whole time, you know, this, these two boys that are falling for each other and having a secret relationship, but they have to hide it. And it's like all this stuff and, um, oh yeah, sorry, it's not just by Sophie Gonzalez. It's also co-written with um, Hale Dietrich, I think is how you say the name. And um, they did a really good job. It's two POVs and yeah, I love, love, love this book. <laughs> So excited for you guys to read it. Um, I have only mostly devastated by Sophie Gonzalez next on my TBR and by next I mean like in a few but um, I also read her perfect on paper because I was trying to see if it was going to be um, a good comp title for Emma and oh, it was so good you guys. The internalized by phobia gets talked about in here and like I can't even talk about it enough. Um, you might have seen my review on Instagram, but let me find what pages I absolutely loved. 296. I really, really loved this. And Sophie is fighting the good fight on it on Twitter so much, like talking about buys. There's like a whole thing of like, if you've never been with the same gender, if you are in a hetero relationship, like if you're like all these things, people are trying to discount you as bi and, and everyone's like, no, like literally that's still okay. Like it's, you don't have to have the experience to feel that way. Like it's, ah. So there's a whole thing that I didn't know was a thing and until this book and I was like, holy crap, I didn't know everyone was going through that. Um, or like, yeah, it just, it, it clicked. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I just summed up basically what the <laughs> I was about to read you guys. But it's just talking about how, um, you're told your sexuality isn't real, that you're straight if you're with another gender, that your feelings don't count if you've never dated a certain gender, um, and that you're turning straight or turning lesbian depending on which gender that you have a crush on. And it's like all these people just like rationalizing it for you and it's like not true and they're pigeonholing you. And I just love this too because I think when you think of like, like who buys life you think that like the world is their oyster but like hi they're not in love with everyone she was like i'm bi not a nympho like I, i'm not gonna just jump with everyone so yeah anyway these pages these pages were so so good and then um everyone like just was telling her at the end like you're queer and it was just so good like i i cried sophie gonzalez big fan if you haven't read hers yet <laughs> Um, and then I read The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon, and this one was already out. Um, I did the audiobook, and it was really, really good. I liked that narrator, and I really enjoyed the story. There, like that, there was a thin thread in this one, too, that happened to be about their boss that I thought was kind of iffy. Um, but I thought Dominic was, like, amazing, like a gentleman, like, uh, just... Yeah, he would be someone I would go for too. <laughs> and I'm really excited to read more of her books uh, once my library gets them in. But the X talk is about a radio station and um, this these two people have to pretend they're exes and uh, talk about why it didn't work with their relationship and all these things and their banter is just so, so fun. Um, then I tried to read The Crowns of Croswald by D.E. Knight and um, I thought it was a middle grade. It's classified as middle grade but it's a 16 year old protagonist and it's that's just very confusing all on its own um it's very reminiscent of other fantasy books but um like magic school books but i thought it was different enough to be intriguing this one has come out already and i think they're just trying to get readers for this one and then i'll be reading the second one and then 
the third one I think is about to come out so they're just trying to generate like reviews and hype for it in that way it's not one that like I have to get to immediately but I am curious about what happens um, and then I finally got around to this uh, huge guy right here a port of silver flames reading reviews online just like <laughs> People are filled with so much hate and I'm so over it because they also, and I'm oh, sorry, if y'all haven't read this yet, Sarah J. Mass about Nesta and Cassian, um, yeah, I liked, uh, I liked, oh my gosh, I almost said Casta, <laughs> I liked Nesta's arc and, um, yeah, everything, I thought it was fine, I don't know what everyone's upset about. There are parts that are like, okay, but, um, you know, whatever. Kate and Waiting, um, fantastic. I loved it. A lot of these books, I found similar reviews that were so frustrating that was like, I'm not the intended uh, audience. I'm a 30 plus, some, you know, year old. Um, the characters were too whiny. Um, it, this was too teen for me. And it's like, fools, y'all are reading young adult books. Y'all have gotten too used to adulting, like adult young adult books, and now y'all are coming back to like sophomore and junior year, and y'all are like, oh, nope, too teen for me, sorry. And it's like, that's what it is though. <laughs> like, oh, y'all are so frustrating because y'all leave one and two re like star reviews, and then it's because you're not in the intended audience, and it's too teen for you. Like, <sighs> I'm gonna rant about that for a bit, but. Kate and Waiting, I thought was so stinking cute. I love Kate. I love Anderson, her best friend. I love Matt. I love Noah. Like, I just, I love the whole thing. There were parts, there's a few parts that didn't get explained, that whole thin thread again, um, that, like, I wish Anderson had explained his, like, the way he was acting, his actions, and I don't, that never really got explained, and then, um, unless he was just, like, hiding, I don't know. And then, uh, Noah, like, why he waited so long unless like like I don't know how Noah didn't give up initially except that like she finally was able to see more people than besides her and Anderson like I don't know those two things but I gave it a five star because I just loved it so much I also read uh, the year Shakespeare ruined my life I did the audiobook of that and this was an arc but it might have come out now too um, so it was also to see if it could be a good comp title for Project Emma, and um, it was about a play, and <laughs> it, yeah, let's see. Oh, it did come out already. Well, I'm just so confused. It's got a lot of stereotypes in there, which was disheartening, and the character arcs in it. A lot of the focus is on the main character instead of her side characters, and so you don't really get a full world. When I read uh, Sophie Gonzalez and Kale's um, if this gets out, one of the characters never really expressed their feelings and that got addressed and like, you know, they worked on it. But in this book, one of the characters like never does and never gets called out and never changes and it's like, okay, um, I just wanted more, I guess. It was good. It was a good book, I thought. Um, I just think more could have been done with it. And then let's see. Okay. Okay. So that's catch up. I'm currently in the middle of a rule of wolves, like I said. So I'm in the middle of this one. And I'm also in the middle of You Have a Match by Emma Lord, who I really love. She did Tweet Cute. And um, I'm actually comping that to my hashtag goal story. But yeah, so these. And then Only Mostly Devastated. And then What's Not to Love is next. Um, Emer <laughs> Emily Wibberly in Austin Siegmund Broga. Um, like seriously, Emily, Sophie, Emma, and Becky would be my like tops for blurbs. <laughs> I want them to blurb my books so bad. Um, and then I'm just going to do a little shout out to uh, Melissa Hope for her middle grade Sea of Kings and like being on ships, fighting the good fight. What's Not to Love uh, I think is about student council. They're like enemies to lovers, most likely, uh, doing the academic route in that one. I feel like I never add enough school in my stories. Um, so the next books that I'm reading that are on my NetGalley app are The Charm Offensive by Allison Cochran? Cochran? And then um, it'll be the second book of that Crowns of Croswald, which is The Girl with the Whispering Shadow. 
So um, those are next for me on this app. I'm really excited about the Charm Offensive. So it says reminiscent of red, white, and royal blue and one to watch, which I also need to read probably. Um, they have, oh yeah, it's a reality show, reality dating show and like behind the scenes stuff. So it kind of reminds me of If This Gets Out where it's like, you know, you're a celebrity or um, in the front of a camera a lot. And so I love that tension, that hiding the stakes. Like, so I'm really, really excited to get to this one. And I've been trying to introduce more adult books as well because that's what I'll be writing next. So if y'all have any suggestions, if y'all just saw all the books that I've read and I'm going to read, if you have any suggestions that are like these books, let me know in the young adult realm or the adult realm. But yeah, if y'all haven't read like any of these authors, my new favorites, like pick up their books. Let me know how y'all like them. If you have read any of these, let me know how you like them. But yeah, this is, I'm like on such a contemporary romance binge right now. Um, and young adult and adult, like, ah, yeah. It's been, it's been good stuff. I've been stressed trying to read these all in a crunch time, but it's been really good. <laughs> So yeah, that's my recap. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. Um, let me know any favorites that you have going on right now and what you plan to read in June. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!